Hi everyone, it's Fredrik Wermling. Uh, I have a research group at Karolinska Institute in Stockholm, Sweden, as I've said several times <laughs> by now. Uh, and in this video, uh, I will just very briefly talk about the ranking um, soft or ranking functionality of Greenlisted. And as mentioned, Greenlisted is a software that you can use to design custom CRISPR screens. All right. Um, so we have the ranking option here, and I just want to make a couple of comments because I know this is something that people can get confused from. So first of all, the ranking does not, the software does not do any ranking based on any algorithm. The, the software only goes in, if you ask the software to do a ranking, it only goes in to the original reference library and, and use uh, ranking possibilities that exist there. So when people have made these type of or re different research and have done these uh, reference libraries, and as, as we talked about, you can find suggestions for, for them if you press the how to use by here. Um, there are, uh, down here are links to papers containing good um, uh, reference libraries. Usually they're found in the supplementary information. Sometimes you need to adjust them a little bit to um, to, uh, to adopt to to uh, for green is to be able to understand them, but it's 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 very not very complicated. And um, there are more than these, and uh, these are good ones. I'm sure there are other ones that are as good, uh, and they will be importantly they will be um, new libraries reference libraries uh, published in in the future. I'm sure. Um, but anyway, the important thing being here that uh, let's see, so, we can go to list. so the, the important thing is that Greenlisted will not by itself do any ranking. It just goes into reference libraries if these reference libraries has any had any uh, the possibility for for ranking. So for this feature, I'm just gonna use the uh, the demo uh, reference library here. Uh, so download this one. Um, we know that column one contains G name, column two contains GRNA, and column three contains a score. Where then, for example, if you're interested in ACIP1, uh, you can see there are several genes uh, down here, different GRNAs of them. And uh, very often the soft, uh, different reference libraries will then say, attribute them to different scores. So for example, this one here, and based on that, the algorithm, this, uh, that was used to design this uh, guide RNA or this this uh, this sequence here. Uh, this has got this particular JRNA or spacer sequence has got a, a fairly high score, so 86.3, while this one has a pretty low one. So this one is, according to the scientists making this, suggesting these, this one is better than that one, and this is even better. Uh, so column one G name GRNA second score third. Importantly, these it doesn't have to be the first, second, and third column. It could be whatever it is. So you know it could be um, score could be in column two hundred. You just have to define it basically. So then let's upload it. Here it says as mentioned Veli field, which is Swedish. We have in our download folder and demo source list. Um, it's loading it. And as, as you know, we have to wait for this information. We know the gene ID column was one in this case, the GRNA column was two in this case, and we know that scoring was three. So we then go to, oh, let's put in some, some genes here, IL2, IL4. Uh, let's go for stat 60, I don't think it's in there, but anyway. Um, and then we want to do use ranking them. So we know there is a score. Um, we know that we, when we design a, a screen, we probably want to use. Um, we don't want to have too many, and maybe probably not too few GRNA sequences either. So some reference libraries actually have thousands and so suggested GRNAs per each gene, and that's not probably not going to be feasible for you to work with. So um, you usually you would want to use, uh, let's say five to ten journeys uh, per per gene but I'm, I'm going to leave that to your own um, yet yeah, to your own um, decision how many you want to use but that's what we usually do at least so here is the, the easiest way would then be to say limit to top five uh, 
GeoNAS. And then we are asking the software basically, find the five best GeoNAS for each of these genes in this reference library and output them. So that's the limited top. And you could imagine here that you would say, I mean, of course, you could say one or you can say 10 or whatever. Um, ranking order here is a little bit confusing, but it, we need to, to tell the software um, if what, what the software should, in a score, what the software should con, uh, interpret as better or worse. So in this, the scoring system that was in, in this list, sorry, um, there is, they are scored from uh, zero to a hundred, where hundred is the best and zero is the worst. So by having ranking order descending, we tell the software that 100 is the best and zero is the worst. However, if we put in ascending here, the software is going to interpret the list, list the, uh, the opposite way so that the zero is going to be the best and 100 is going to be the worst. And by default, because this is probably all the time actually, but most, <laughs> almost all the time, you're going to use descending because higher numbers are what we usually attribute to something that being better than. But you could consider if you have, for example, a p-value. Let's say that your, your reference library is, is, is giving you a p-value and you know that the lower p-value is better. So uh, if by any chance, then you would have that type of ranking situation. You could go in and say ascending, limit to top five, and then uh, it would understand that the top five would actually be the five and uh, GNAs with the lowest score. But by default and probably all the time, you're going to use ranking order descending here. An alternative to saying limit to the top one would be that we have so much confidence in this that we just want to say we know that everything in within this particular interval is good enough. So in this reference library, as mentioned, the scores are between uh, zero and hundred. Let's say uh, we want to have everything about fifty to hundred. So we just want to include everything there. Um, I'm going to re remove this one here just for uh, and what happens then when we press run is that it's going to take not uh, an exact number of GeoNAs but it's just going to take all the GeoNAs that have a good a score that's good enough and you can be very strict here of course you can say I just want uh, GeoNAs containing a, a score between 95 and 100 and then of course you're going to have fewer of them and then you can actually combine these things you could say all right, uh, we want, don't want to have uh, GRNAs that have a lower score than 50. So we want them to be in the interval 50 to 100. But we want to try to limit this to uh, the top three one of them, for example. So you, this is uh, an alternative you can use then. So, and let's, uh, let's, see, let's include some adapter sequences because that's something you always want to have. Just put them in. For cloning purpose, of course, I just put them in randomly. We press run. We download uh, the list here, and as you will see, um, this there was several problems with this input that I, I, I um, entered. You can see not found list here, so it didn't find either IL two or STAT six. Um, and when it comes to cut short, um, yeah, so IL two was wasn't uh, it wasn't able to find any. Um, any any GRNAs um, within this interval with this ranking that we did. Um, and this we can actually, sorry if we, uh, let's see if we make this a little bit more easy to, to read. Here. So we can see um, we wanted to have three GRNAs per gene and it did cut short IL2, so it didn't identify three uh, for Right to actually it found none. But the total of GRNAs in this list for IL2 was actually one. And this tells us that when we put in, and this, this is useful when you start using this um, uh, the functionality of interval, because this tells us that there was there is actually one GRNA in this list, um, in this reference library. However, um, it didn't uh, it didn't come into the interval that we were asking. So we were asking for GRNAs between a score of 1500, and it didn't find any any um, any GRNA with that that score for IL2. Um, 
So the very minor library actually that it was able to make here is it only contains uh, three GNAs for IN4. And uh, I want to mention that. So in, in these examples I'm using here, oftentimes I input very few numbers of genes uh, just for the ease of it. Um, this is not what you would do when you're designing CRISPR libraries using software. Most probably you would have lists of thousands of genes that you input, and that's actually where the big the power of the software exists. Anyway, we could go into the uh, output list here um, and you can copy it as you know, go to Excel, paste it, so those to not confuse you, and the GRNA sequence with adapters. This is the, the list you will copy and send to the, to the company for synthesis, where you have the suggested GRNA here and the adapters here. All right. Um, so that was the um, the ranking um, functionality of Greenlisted. Thank you.